All right, guys, we are into chapter seven. Chapter seven is arguably the most important uh, chapter in Algebra One. It deals with polynomial equations and factoring. This video's shout out to uh, Owen and Mr. Mazzo's block one class. Here we go. So first thing, um, is about finding the degrees of monomials. A monomial is a number, um, a variable, or the product of a number and one or more variables with whole number exponents. Key thing here is the degree of a monomial is the sum of the exponents of the variables. We're talking about the degree in terms of a monomial, which you're going to see, where we only have one term. And in those cases here, when we're talking about the degree, we're going to add up the degrees of the exponents on the variables. The degree of a non-zero constant term is zero, and the constant zero does not have a degree. So if we take a look at this example right here, example number one, we have four different things here, and we want to find uh, the degree of the monomial. And again, as I said, it's a monomial. You're going to see later on, we're going to have binomials, trinomials. There's only one term here, okay? Terms are separated by operations, such as a plus or a minus and so on. So letter A is, is pretty easy. Um, in finding the degree, we're looking at the highest exponent. There's only one variable here. Um, it's the x, so my degree here would be 2. In this example here, I have two different variables. I have my x and I have my y. And the x, keep in mind, really has a very or an exponent rather of 1. So I add up my exponents, which is the 1 on the x and the 3 on the y. So my degree here in letter B is going to be 4. Once again here, I have two variables. I have my x and my y. It's a monomial. I'm going to add up my variables, my or sorry, my exponents, my 3 and my 3. So my degree here is going to be 6. And here, I don't have any variables, okay? This is the case where there is no variable, meaning there is no x, there's no y, there's no z, there's no a. It's just a constant. It's negative three, and if we go back here, we know the degree of a non-zero constant term is zero, which is what we have here. So this would have a degree of zero. So these are easy, these are the most basic type, okay? We're writing the degree of a monomial, we add those two exponents or three exponents, whatever it might be, for each of our different variables. What happens more often than not is we have polynomials, okay? A polynomial is a monomial or a sum of monomials. Each monomial is called a term of the polynomial. A polynomial with two terms is called a binomial. Like a bicycle has two wheels. A polynomial with two terms is a binomial. Notice they're separated by operations, such as plus or minus and so on. So this is a binomial, 5x plus 2. A polynomial with three terms is called a trinomial. So we see here... We have three separate terms, or three separate terms rather. I'll highlight them so you can see them more easily. So we have x squared, we have 5x, and we have 2. There's three separate terms there. Um, so in that case, that would be a trinomial. Beyond that, when we get into things like four terms and five terms and so on and so forth, we just call it a polynomial with blank terms, a polynomial with four terms, a polynomial with six terms, and so on and so forth. So binomial, two terms, trinomial, three terms, Beyond that, it's just a polynomial with the number of terms. Now, in this case here, where we have multiple terms, the degree is the greatest degree of its term, okay? A polynomial in one variable is in standard form, standard form when the exponents go from greatest to least, okay? So my, my term with the highest exponent is going to be on my left-hand side. When you write a polynomial in standard form, the coefficient of the first term is the leading coefficient. So you want to make sure that you have this example written down with each part labeled, okay? The leading coefficient is the number in front of the term with the highest degree. Your degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent. Constant term would be the, uh, the term that does not have a variable. So make sure that you have this down with everything labeled. This is very important. All right. So write the example 15x minus x cubed plus 3 in standard form. Identify the degree and leading coefficient. 
of the polynomial. Mm -hmm. So when we're writing in standard form, we're writing from highest exponent to lowest exponent to constant term. So here's my term with the highest exponent. It's negative x cubed. I'm going to have negative x cubed. Then this is a positive 15x, so plus 15x plus 30. So there it is in standard form right there. My leading coefficient here is the number in front of my uh, highest degree or the number that's that's leading the problem. So in this case here, there's just a negative symbol, which means that my leading coefficient is really negative one. And my degree here is whatever the degree is of my highest term. So if I'm looking here, oops. This was a three. My degree here is going to be three. I only have one variable x. That's why in this case here, I'm not adding that three plus the one that's with the 15x. It's just the highest exponent when we deal with problems like this. All right, write each polynomial in standard form. Identify the degree. Classify the polynomial by the number of terms. So let's take a look at this one. So if we have letter uh, A, negative 3z to the fourth, that's already in standard form. It's only one term. My leading coefficient is going to be negative 3. The degree is 4. And this is just a monomial because it only has one term. In letter B, my degree or my, my term with the highest degree is that 5x squared. So I'm going to have 5x squared minus x, and then your constant is always last, plus 4. The leading coefficient here is 5. The degree is 2, and this would be a trinomial. And make sure that you have this down, okay? And over here, q to the fifth plus 8q. Remember, the, the term with the highest exponent goes first. Leading coefficient, what number is really in front of q to the fifth? That would be a 1. Your degree, highest exponent, is 5. And this would be a binomial. So you have to be comfortable writing things in standard form. You have to be comfortable identifying the leading coefficient, and you have to be comfortable to, um, identifying the degree and the name. Remember, do not do not identify the leading coefficient until you've written it in standard form. We'll do the try these in class. Now on to the fun stuff, finding the sum. So now what we're doing here is we're actually adding and subtracting polynomials. This is where it gets exciting. So we're going to show you a couple different ways to go about doing this. We're going to do it um, horizontally, and then I'm going to do it vertically, okay? So first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that your things are in, for a lot of people, to put them in standard form. So if I look at my first set of parentheses here, that's in standard form, but I, my second set is not. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that. I'm going to write this as x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1. Now... I'm going to do this one um, horizontally. When you're doing this, all you're doing is you're combining your like terms. Key thing here that people make a mistake, do not add the exponents. So what I mean by that is if I have 2x cubed plus x cubed, don't make that 3x to the 6th power. I've got two x cubes, just like if I had two apples, and I'm adding one apple, I'm not going to have three apples squared. I'm just going to have three apples. So if I have two x cubed, I'm going to use my highlighter here. If I have two x cubed, I can combine that with the x cubed. I can combine the negative 5x squared with the positive 2x squared. I have a plus x that I don't have anything to combine it with, right? Because I don't have a, a, an x over there in my second one. And then I have a negative one that's all by itself over there. So it's an important kind of 
task here to, to make sure that you're combining your like terms. So let's go ahead and let's do that. I like to cross them out as I go along. So 2x cubed plus x cubed is going to be 3x cubed. Negative 5x squared plus 2x squared is going to be negative 3x squared. Plus x has nothing to combine with, so it's going to say plus x. And minus 1 has nothing to combine with, so it's going to say minus 1. And there's my answer. The leading coefficient here is 3. The degree is 3. This is a polynomial with four terms. I'm going to show you in this one another way to do this, which is to line things up vertically, which some people like to do. So we've got 3x squared plus x minus 6, and we're adding x squared plus 4x plus 10. So 3x squared plus x minus 6. And we're going to add x squared plus 4x plus 10 to that. So if you're more comfortable seeing it this way, Lining them up vertically, go with that route. 3x squared plus x squared is 4x squared. Positive 1x plus positive 4x is positive 5x. And negative 6 plus a positive 10 is going to be positive 4. So you get 4x squared plus 5x plus 4. This would be a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 4 and a degree of two. So it would be a second degree. Soon we'll learn it's called a quadratic, quadratic trinomial with a leading coefficient of four. So it's all about combining your like terms. Okay, that's the key thing here. Combine your like terms. That's all you're doing. All right, I'll give you a second to make sure you have that down. Now, a little bit more challenging here because we have a difference, okay? So we have a difference here. So in this particular case here, we've got that minus. And I think the easiest way is to distribute that subtraction sign first. Or else you're going to run into some issues with signs. So I think let's distribute this to everything here. So when we do that, we're going to end up with a plus 2n squared. Minus minus is going to be a minus 2n. Give that negative to that negative 4, it's going to be a plus 4. And then over here, I have 4n squared plus 5. Now it's a lot easier to combine our like terms. If you don't distribute that, that negative sign, that subtraction sign, you're going to make a mistake with your signs, especially on some of those latter terms as a part of your trinomial. So now let's combine our like terms. I can combine the 4n squared plus the 2n squared. I can combine the 5 with the 4. And then that minus 2n squared over here, or minus 2n rather, there's nothing to combine with. So let's combine. 4n squared plus 2n squared is... 6n squared. That's done. I want to write this in standard form, so I see what's next. I have a minus 2n. And then I have a 5, a positive 5, plus a 4, which is going to get me 9. And there's my answer. Again, trinomial, leading coefficient 6, degree of 2. Let's look at the next one. We've got 4x squared minus 3x plus 5. And again, let's distribute. Give that minus sign to everything in our second one. I'm going to write the first one the same way. 4x squared minus 3x plus 5. And what are we doing? Well, when I distribute that negative, I'm going to have a minus 3x squared. That minus times a negative x is going to get me a plus x. And that minus times a negative 8 is going to get me a plus Eight. Combine our like terms. I've got a 4x squared minus a 3x squared. I've got a negative 3x plus an x. And I've got a positive 5 plus an 8. So 4x squared 
minus 3x squared is going to be 1x squared. Negative 3x plus x is going to be minus 2x. And then positive 5 plus 8 is going to be plus 13. And there we go. The problem with these, these types of questions is it's really easy to misassign, add something incorrectly, and then get a piece of it wrong. So really make sure that you're comfortable with each individual piece when you're solving these types of questions. And we're not solving anything necessarily. We're really just simplifying, finding the difference, finding the sum, and so on. We'll save the try these for the class. As well as the examples on the word problems. See you in class, guys.